Auzu billahi mineşşeytanir racim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Ve salatu ve selamü aleyhi ve selam. Seyyidina ve Mevlana Muhammedun Mustafa sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. Ya Seyyidi ya Resulü Kerim. Ya Habibül Azim ucun halena ve şifalena ve abidûne ve medadakum ve nazarakum. Mel ya Seyyidi ya Sultan ile uliye ma şeyh adil ve feyze dağıstani. Mel ya Seyyidi ya Sultan ile uliye ma şeyh Muhammed Nazım adil hakkani. Madadil hak ya hocatullah ya muhtes. Ucun halena ve şifalena ve abidûne ve medadakum ve nazarakum. Hadi meclis ya Rabbi. Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Atiye Allah, Atiye Rasul ve ulul amri minkum. Elhamdülillah, Allah Azze ve Celle guided us to this path and to be under the flag of Sayyidina Muhammed sallallahu alayhi ve sellem, under the nazar of Uliya Allah and under Allah Azze ve Celle's infinite rahmah. And first to admit to myself, Ya Rabbi ana abdukul ajeez, wa da'if, wa miskeen, wa zalim, wa jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that I'm still in existence and that Allah's Allah Allah's rahmah to guide us and to dress us and to take a path in which we try so hard to be nothing and how shaitan continuously confuses us of our path. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaitani r-rajeem, Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu, amin, aman. As all you who believe, Sallallahu establishes that we're talking to people who believe, believe. And again reminder because you never know that somebody may remember after the hundredth time of saying something, something triggers, hey, is that what you meant? Or as you struggle more, you go deeper, it opens itself. Allah is divinely words, not my words, I'm nothing. Allah's Holy Qur'an and the words of Sayyidina Muhammad and the inspirations of Allah, they're like a little flower bud that as soon as you water it with good action, good amal, through struggle and strive, like a seed it breaks. The seed has such a tremendous difficulty in the dirt but by its watering, by its struggling, its striving, it eventually can break and once the seed breaks the spout or the little seedling comes out and now a fruit, a tree, a plant, a flower is going to grow. Our life is about that struggle so that we can blossom. And Allah is giving that all you who believe that there are infinite ranks of belief and the schools of taskiyah, the schools of purification that we find ourselves enrolled in them. They're all within the oceans of taslim and Islam. And from the darajats of Islam that Allah wants to complete His favours upon us. That your Islam and taslim is an action, is a, is a verb. That your life is about submitting. So I dress you and send you into the schools that teach real submission. And reminded of Shaykh Daghestani, Mawlana Sharafuddin Daghestani, that in the time of the Cossacks, the Russian armies that were coming against in Daghestan, they were slaughtering all of the Muslims. When in that region they had big difficulties with Shaykh Daghestani's tribes that they were trying to keep themselves alive and they were coming people from place to place and slaughtering. And they came to Shaykh Daghestani and said that uh, these people are approaching, they're in that village at a distance, they're coming towards our village. Yes, Shaykh Daghestani, tell us what to do. He said, plant your flowers, it's planting season. Um, we say it but we're hoping that we are the people of contemplation. Shaykh Daghestani was telling his people that plant your seeds. He's aware of what's coming, he's aware of the difficulties that are coming. And the people are frightened by their nature and 
difficulty within their faith and their iman and they're asking the shaykh what should we do and his reply plant your seeds at that time plant the seeds something going to happen there's going to be a sifting because this path is not an easy path and the darajat that Allah wants to grant is not for everyone there's going to be a sifting and the tariqah is all about sifting that you throw out the rocks to keep the stones from semi-precious stones to precious stones. They don't want rock collection. So you have to keep sifting, keep testing, keep testing. So then a great test that plant your seeds, don't worry. Okay, the two-thirds of the jama' in that region of Dagestan, they said their shaykh is crazy. So now in the middle of this test, they begin to exhibit their true nature and their character. And this is what Allah wants, that those people with you, they pretend to be with you but if you squeeze a little bit, they begin to exhibit their true nature. Do they see that nature? And that's the whole purpose of testing. It wasn't about the end goal because you don't even know the end goal. It wasn't about the planting but because they have little faith and little understanding they begin to find a reason in which they're fighting about the planting. Why is he asking us to plant? What kind of coordinates is this? We're surely going to be slaughtered. We're going to be slaughtered. These people are coming from village to village slaughtering and he's telling us to plant, oh he just wants the money from the crops, he wants the food, he wants this or maybe he lost his coordinates and he lost his mind. Means then in every test in our life is they give that example so that you can visualize that what Allah wounds from us is the struggle. We don't know the end coordinates. It's not important that you think you even know the end coordinates. That you think it's about the planting but it's about something much deeper from Allah That as soon as Allah gives a coordinates, He wants to see your level of faith, your level of struggle, your level of taslim and istiqam to be firm in your feet, firm in your belief. Otherwise if you're crazy now, imagine what you're going to be when difficulty comes. They're not interested in crazy people. People will be sifted and thrown out. What they're interested in is the people who want to taslim and submit. Submit their craziness, submit their doubt, submit all of their bad characteristics and taslim. And say, for surely I know nothing, I don't know my name in Allah's presence. And I have seven names, I don't know myself and I'm with this donkey all the time and I don't know it. How am I going to know that shaykh? How am I going to know Prophet Most of all greatest, how am I going to know Allah So I don't know. So what Sayyidina Yunus? Laila anta subhanika ini kuntum minal dhalimin. Subhanika Allahumma ya Rabbi. Glory be to you for I'm truly an oppressor to myself. If that's not the zikr of our path, it's from Qur'an we say a hundred times but I don't think people really take heed of it. They think, oh Shaykh is talking about somebody else. No, he's talking about himself. This was our path, this is my path. This is my coordinates with my Shaykh. Is that I am oppressor to myself. Ya Rabbi, if you leave me to myself, which myself is now the one whispering, this shaykh doesn't know what he's doing. Who's, who's saying that? Is you getting inspiration from Allah to say that shaykh doesn't know? That shaykh is a representative of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad. You're coming against Allah. Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Am. Any time in your life that you're going to speak bad, about the Ulul Am, you're speaking bad about Prophet 
you're speaking bad about Allah And every time you talk with doubt and talk with shaq and talk with all these bad characteristics, the people around you are listening to what you're saying and they're building their faith on that. So I know many people, they were coming and they talk so bad at their table about the shaykhs. That he doesn't know, he's like that, like that, like that, the children are listening. The families listen and when it comes time to believe, what believe? You were just telling us all these crazy things, we don't believe in any shaykhs. You made them now from Hizb shaitan because they in their heart they pulled away from that understanding, they pulled away from these people. Instead of having ihtiram and love, the shaykh is, is busy trying to build the love of Prophet the love of that example. An insan who becomes partnered with shaitan is continuously trying to destroy that image, destroy its name, destroy its value. Nurul Anwar was Sirat al Asrar, they carry the lights of Prophet. When you defame and deface and devalue them, you are taking away from Prophet. Who are you coming against? And if you come against Prophet, you are coming against Allah. So it means you feed the people around you garbage and then you'll be surprised, oh, why is everything so garbage? But you feed it good, you feed it with love. We only talked great about Muhammad al -Shaykh. If there was any confusion in my heart, it was my confusion. And Mawlana is great, his light immense, he represents Sayyidina Muhammad Any time in your life you believe, this was my belief, being taught to people who are listening, that should be your belief. But if you want to feed doubt and suspicion and effacing and defacing and defaming, there will be nothing of, of Iman. There'll be nothing of Iman and then from that group of people, two-thirds of them looked at the shaykh and said, you don't know what you're talking about. They didn't have the Iman in their heart to follow. They used their brain and all the bad characteristics and said, surely you don't know what you're talking about. These coordinates you're giving to us make no sense at this time and they ran. They ran and they were slaughtered in the woods. What do you think was waiting for them? Is shaitan is waiting for you. You think you walk away, that's why Allah and that's why so many times they give the ayat of the bayah and the ahad, the ahad, the, the covenant of Allah Those who gave a covenant and they fulfilled their covenant with Allah they're truly successful. And those who broke their covenant, broke it to the demise of their own soul. I mean what Allah will from us, don't separate. Don't lift your hand. Lift your hand means don't even lose your faith. What's coming is unimaginable. And so then the turuqs, everything about their operation is to test. The one making sandwiches downstairs, we're not a sandwich shop. <laughs> we didn't come into this life and left this life and he didn't sit in this life and leave this life to go back to Allah that he makes a good panini with garlic. <laughs> you gotta be crazy if that's all you saw of it. But it goes back to Allah in complete taslim. Because if you change the recipe, if we change the recipe ten times, he'll change it ten times. If you say you did everything wrong, he'll say you're correct, we did everything wrong. And in the old days they'd have a bog and a farm and they said, go out and plant. And say, no, no, you planted it wrong. Even to the extent if they didn't have that, they had a pile of bricks. And there's hundred bricks on this side, they say, move these bricks to this side. Then you move the bricks to this side, say, I don't want it there. I'm, no, no, I want it, move the bricks to that side. Then you move the bricks to that side. It wasn't about the shaykh doesn't know where he wants these bricks. Allah it was about Allah seeing your struggle. Because as soon as you struggle, your true character comes out. When you sit in leisure and it's everything great and somebody giving you samosas and you're having your tea, you, you talk very sweet. As soon as they make you to go through a grind and begin to test you in your grind, 
and they grind you, all your craziness comes out, all your bad talk comes out, all your doubts and everything is coming out of you. That's what they want you to see. The taruq is not about the end result because you don't know the end result. You sit with the shaykh and say, I'm trying to get a job, he tell you to apply for every ridiculous position. We said this before. Shaykh doesn't know what he's talking about. It wasn't about you even finding a job. Maybe Allah doesn't want you to have a job. Yeah, because then the grind become more difficult. Can you imagine struggling with no job? Then you're sweating and angry becomes more. Then they want to see and then look into the heart, Allah is looking into the heart that he's got a lot of complaints when he's being grinded or if he's perfected he has very little complaints. He says, Alhamdulillah Allah providing for me. I'm eating, I'm not starving, I have a roof over my head. It's just being postponed, postponed, postponed to grind, to grind, to grind, to see where the characteristic is. So it means the taruq is not about the end result. Don't think you're clever and you figured it out, your head has no understanding. This was from the example of Nabi Musa He didn't understand the coordinates. Everything he's talking about with Sayyidina Khidr he's thinking he understands. He's going to teach Sayyidina Khidr about Sharia. So this wasn't about that. This was about you following, being patient and being tested. And in the testing, you want to see your character, not me. There are 40 above that are watching you. And they watch you when you go home. And they watch you when you're talking. And they watch you when you're talking to your family. And they watch every aspect of what you're doing to see if that quality is there and that that station is being achieved. Because only through the grinding Allah can see the goodness of character. Because everybody is sweet when everything is sweet. But when you're sad and you lose faith, are you still sweet? You give up in your belief in Allah your love for Sayyidina Muhammad doubt in only Allah and pious people who opened everything for you. You look left and right for you, how everything opened, how that barakah is dressing everything and that you find yourself sitting in circles of paradise, eating from circles of paradise, dressed from circles of paradise, you could be in nightclubs right now. It is the glue that binds your entire family. For if you doubt and you leave, look at all the families that have no glue and everybody is in a divorce, everything is in a separation and the children can't stand the sight of their own parents. It is a glue that binds because Allah Holy Qur'an, don't separate, hold tight to the rope of Allah and don't separate. These are the Ahlul Hub, the people of love, Hablillah, the people of the rope and Hub, it's the same letters. Means if you keep the company of the people of love, that immense love is a glue that binds all our families, all our relationships. Why? Because Allah you can't make anyone love you but when you love Allah He makes all of creation to love you. Everything in creation loves you. From malaika, salamun qawlun bi rabbil raheem. If Allah said, just I love that one, everything in its being will love you. So then people stay together. Even they fight, they still have an immense love. The children are attracted to you. When you come home, they want to see you. Why? Because they're mazloom and pure and Allah put that love immensely in their heart. Like a sponge, they want to be with that love. If Allah pull that love and say, you go to Hezb shaitan you take the hand of shaitan, is there any love? Your children will hate you, your spouse will hate you and this dunya will hate you. That's why Allah says then, you damage to your own self. Means what I'm dressing you of muhabba, of, of realities is so immense and taking us into the Divinely Presence. But we always have to remember, this, is, this game is about the struggle and not the end result. And when you forget about the struggle and think you'll make a shortcut to the end result, that's not what this game is about. 
they want to see the struggle, they want to see the characteristics within that struggle. Means they walked away from Grand Shaykh Sharaf al Din except one third. They said, Grand Shaykh, we're, we're putting our seeds. They put their seeds, as soon as they finished their planting, they said, Come here. Everybody gathered and took water. I'm going to recite from Surat al Yaseen upon this water as a protection for you. Drink from this water and follow me, we're walking through now. They walk from Dagestan all the way to Turkey and not one person was shot, not one person was killed. And he said that everything in the forest was shot. If a bird moved, they were shooting at it. They were slaughtering from village to village. They didn't take a single weapon. Not, there was no fighting. He said, just you read on this water I'm going to read, you drink from this water, follow me. And we're going into Turkey. And they walked the whole way to Turkey, all of them safe. Why the first test? Because they have to have iman. If they are not believing in you, you tell me to drink that water and they start shooting in the bushes, I'm screaming and everybody going to be slaughtered. Means our life is about testing. When Allah wants something, Allah knows what's coming. Allah knows the difficulty that's coming. If the level of belief is not there on this garbage, imagine the level of belief when real difficulty opens. We pray that Allah guide us, bless us and grant us the lights of faith. Alhamdulillah Saturday night is Israhi wal Miraj, inshaAllah Allah dress us from those lights. Prophet dress us and bless us from those lights and only Allah dress us and bless us and keep us under their nazar inshaAllah with those lights. Inna sharaf al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa risabi kiram wa lami shaykhina fi tariqat al-nashbandiyyat al-aliyya wa sayr wa saadatina wa sadaqina al-fatiha. Sidna al-Nabi, Sidna al-Nabi, Sidna al-Nabi, Sidna al-Nabi.